Mechagodzilla has always been one of the toughest opponents for the King of the Monsters. Crafted in his image, they are designed to kill or at the very least contain him. Created for the celebration of 20 years of Godzilla, the original doppelganger had the face of a demon and was a brutal and unforgiving powerhouse. They are alien controlled and have aspirations beyond the big G with world domination as their ultimate goal. The title of Mechagodzilla is a combination of two words, Mechanical and Godzilla. However, there is a robotic Gojira that does predate Mecha-G. Featured in 1972's Chibiko Special, a television show where judges would rate kaiju, including examples from Toho Studios, was Mechanagodzilla. A Showa G suit colored with silver paint, complete with switches on its chest. Co-designer for the actual Mecha-G, Nobuyuki Yasamuru, was even a judge on the show, but as it turns out, the real influence would be Mechanicom. First appearing in the King Kong show in 1966, and the film King Kong Escapes the following year. Early on in the writing and brainstorming period for what would become the 14th film, a script called Giant Monsters Converge on Okinawa, showdown in Zan Pamasaki, was submitted by Shinichi Sekizawa and Jun Fukuda. Their idea would include a new robot called Garugan that would do battle with Godzilla and Giris and Mothra. Unfortunately, there was no concept art or description of Garugan other than the fact that it would be controlled by the Garuga aliens but for the next evolution of the script, Garugan would become Mechagodzilla. Director of Special Effects, Teriyoshi Nakano, would confirm that the idea of Mecha-G originated from producer Tomoyuki Tanaka. The film would celebrate Godzilla's 20th anniversary, so it called for a new antagonist, and with the recent increase in the popularity of robots, he thought why not make a Godzilla version of Mechanicom. As an added bonus, Nakano knew that the mechanical based suits were cheaper to create which fit in with the lower budgets of the end of the era. Nakano would then hand the task of designing Mecha-G to Akahiko Iguchi, who he worked with on Ultraman Ace. Early concept art, though not available, was said to show the robotic G with a rainbow tinted body, perhaps reminiscent of the early rainbow colored Ghidorah concepts. It had an overall look that was said to be cleaner than the final design, Missing the rivets and MG badges on the arms, a touch that Koichi Kawakita would say gave the suit a steampunk vibe. When it comes to the face of Mecha-G, it does look like Godzilla, but there is another reference here from Japanese culture that is also seen in the face of Jet Jaguar. It's the Hanya masks of the No Theater, Kyojin plays, and certain Shinto dances. The term Hanya is the Sino-Japanese word for wisdom, and these famous masks are a depiction of jealous female demons. They feature two horns with piercing metallic eyes, vicious teeth, and they are artfully crafted with the ability to display differing emotions, depending on the angle from which they are viewed. When confronted with the mask head on, it's angry and frightening. Yet when tilted down, it appears sad and sorrowful. In modern culture, the mask is commonly portrayed in tattoos, where it continues its dual nature of meaning, with some wearing it as a warning that they will not show pity on others, while others don it as a symbol of good luck, an object used to ward off evil spirits. The birthplace of the first show of Mecha-G is the third planet of a black hole from an unknown part of space. From here, its base of operations would be a secret underground factory in Gyokusendo, Okinawa. However, the robot would be destroyed by the combined efforts of King Caesar and Godzilla, and its remains would sink to the ocean floor off of Okinawa where they would later be retrieved by the kaiju Titanosaurus. From its remnants, the simians would rebuild the mechanized conqueror, officially calling it Mechagodzilla II, upgrading it in another underground base near Mount Miyagi. When first unleashed on the planet, Mecha-G initially was in disguise as Godzilla. In this fake Godzilla form, it looked very similar to its Showa counterpart, yet with more aggressive facial features. What really set it apart was its metallic sounding movements and roars, its hatred of Angiris, and its take on the Atomic Blast, a yellow beam attack that can only be used while wearing the fake G skin. Each of the Mechagodzillas are made of exotic materials, with the Showa versions utilizing the alien metal Space Titanium, an alloy 10 times stronger than normal Earth metals. In the real world, titanium was widely used by the military in the 1960s, most notably with the futuristic A-12 and SR-71 Blackbird. It was called the Space Age Metal, which is likely the reason why an alien-made variant of it was used for the film. 
Another possible reason for its inclusion is that it was also being looked at for its use in the storage of nuclear waste due to their corrosion resistance, and I can't help but wonder if this possible attribute was why Toho wanted to use it, as they could then say that it would be useful in repelling atomic breath attacks, a feature that will show up in later models. As for the intelligence of the robot, it all depends on who is remotely controlling it. MG-1 was controlled by the Black Hole Planet 3 aliens or simians from a remote base monitored by several technicians and their leader, Kuronuma. MG-2 was also led remotely from a hidden base by the simians and their new leader, Mughal, but eventually the commands would go through the cyborg daughter of Shinzo Mifune, Katsura. In both cases, the Black Hole Planet 3 aliens were ruthless in their usage of the mech kaiju, nearly killing Anguirus, easily defeating King Caesar, and pushing Godzilla to its limits. They were here to conquer the planet, and showed no remorse in killing humans or kaiju and controlled mecha G accordingly. The firepower here is by far the largest array of weapons for any single kaiju of the era. For MG-1, he has five Space Finger missiles on each hand, capable of detonating on impact or acting as impaling spikes. From his three toes are high pressure homing missiles that could explode or drill into a target before detonating. Both of these were able to not only knock down King Caesar, but they were even able to level Godzilla with a single blast from the hand. There were two more missile ports, one on each knee called the Hamu Shock, and like the others, they detonate on impact or have a delayed effect. Even his mouth contained missile launchers, with two on the floor and three more on the roof, and all of these attacks were endless, as they were continuously replaced once fired from an internal missile plant located in the waste. For energy-based weaponry, he is equipped with space beams. Fired from his eyes, these were strong enough to knock over opponents, lock with and overcome the atomic breath attack, and they were even able to draw blood on Godzilla in minimal blast. From his chest, concealed behind an armored door, is the cross attack beam, a yellow lightning-colored ray powerful enough to slice the top of a mountain clean off. He also had three other attacks that are noted by Toho in various publications, yet they are not used in either film. The first one is the Therese or Trace attack, in which he could rapidly fire small missiles from vents on his neck. The second one is the Desto fire, flaming bullets fired from the nose, able to reach temps of 500,000 degrees Celsius. And the third one, the Unisot or Unisot, is the blade on its tail, which was said to be able to come off and be used as a weapon. Defensively, he can put up a force field of sorts called the Defense Neo Barrier. Induced by spinning its head, this impenetrable shield formed a cylinder around the robot that was unbreakable, fending off atomic blasts and repelling a charging Godzilla, burning his hands in the process. While he may be a master of ranged attacks, he lacks somewhat in the melee fighting arena. Though to be fair, he was up against some of the best close range fighters of the era. His size and weight would help initially against King Caesar, but the Okinawan defender was able to out-wrestle the robot until it was able to land missile strikes, disorienting and possibly even scaring him, leaving an opening to finish the match. Godzilla, on the other hand, would dominate the Metal G up close, taking no real damage and tearing off its head on two separate occasions. And to move this massive robot around is the power of flight, supplied by two jet fire engines, one in each foot, capable of reaching speeds of Mach 5 while raining down space beams from above. For the second version, its finger missiles are upgraded, revolving missiles, Mega Godzilla's new weapons, now five times stronger than before. The simians modify the robot with living human brain cells so that the control center can issue their commands secretly through Katsura. MG-1 was destroyed when its head was removed, and now there is the head controller, allowing it to continue the fight still receiving commands. It does lose the ability to fire space beams, but they are now replaced by the super beam, a smaller white ray with similar effect. The Showa Mecha G comes in weighing 40,000 metric tons and stands at 50 meters or 164 feet tall. When it's in its fake Godzilla disguise, it's the same height and weight, so even though it seems like a solid or skin-like cover, it seemingly has no mass. When compared to its successors, the Heisei and Legendary takes are huge, standing at 120 meters or about 394 feet tall and 150,000 metric tons. 
and 122 meters or just over 400 feet tall. Kiryu is closer in size at 60 meters or close to 197 feet tall and 36,000 or 40,000 metric tons while carrying its back unit. The animated one, if it were to actually form up, was to be the same height and a bit lighter at 30,000 metric tons. Now the Showa G is the same height but only half its weight. The Heisei G is bigger at 80 to 100 meters but is only a bit heavier at 50 to 60,000 metric tons. But he is finally outclassed in size standing next to giants like the Showa era's King Ghidorah at 100 meters and 30,000 metric tons, Shin's fourth form at 118.5 meters and 92,000 metric tons, and Godzilla Earth, the 300 plus meter Goliath that's surprisingly only 2.5 times heavier at 100,000 metric tons. Outside of Toho, the Dragon Zord is 38 meters or about 125 feet tall. Ava Unit 001 is 40 meters or 132 feet tall. The Colossal Titan is 60 meters or 197 feet tall. And Gypsy Avenger is 81.77 meters or 268 feet tall. They stand at only a meter above the Arc de Triomphe, 6.4 meters under the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and 43 meters or around 141 feet under the Statue of Liberty. Both MG1 and 2 were modeled by Nobuyuki Yasumaru and Tomoki Kobayashi and were portrayed by suit actor Kazunari Mori for the show eras Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla, while the character Mechaji goes on to appear in many other film universes. There's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 of the Heisei era, Kiryu from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Godzilla Tokyo SOS of the Millennium era, an animated version from the three-part Godzilla series, most prominently part 2, followed by Ready Player One, and most recently, Legendary's Take featured in Godzilla vs. Kong. He's also showed up in various comics including Godzilla Legends and Rulers of Earth, and he's been teased to appear in Season 2 of the animated Godzilla Singular Point. To learn more about King Caesar and how he's just an ancient mystical version of Mecha Godzilla or something else, try out one of these videos. Otherwise, take care, and I hope to see you next time.